For number 23 on the study guide for algebra B, test 2, quarter 4, is talking about Julianne and Angel are having to having a party, and it would take Angel six hours to call everyone. But if Julianne helps, so together, now notice this part right here. If Julianne helps Angel, it takes only four hours. So this is a total. This is together. They end up only taking four hours. So it's a little bit different than the last two problems that we ended up working on. So let's take a look at what we'll end up doing here. It's job equals rate times by time. A job completion is 100%. But this time, their rates, we're going to end up doing subtraction because they're saying how long would it take only Julianne to invite everyone? So only Julianne. So we're going to take the total together. We're going to take away Angel's rate. And then we're going to find out how long it takes Julianne to do that job. So we've got to come up with a common denominator. So I see if I just multiply the 3, the 1 fourth by 3 thirds, and the 1 sixth by 2 over 2, I'll end up coming up with the common denominator. So I end up with a 3 over 12 minus a 2 over 12 multiplied by the time and equals 1. So we go ahead and do that subtraction. We're left with 1 12th t equals 1. So you multiply by the reciprocal, and it would give us the time at which Juliana can do the job. And so it looks like it's going to take her 12 hours doing the job as she works alone. Take a look at our next one over here. Chris and Brian drove a total of 362 miles in 7 hours. Okay, so let's write that down. Chris and Brian drove together. Distance equals rate times time. And that's a total. See, these are totals. Total time, total distance, and total time. So we can find out their average rate if we wanted to. And so it says that Chris drove the first part. So we're going to use these, end up using those in an expression later on. So let's start with Chris's. So Chris drove the first part of the trip and averaged 45 miles an hour. So we know it's 45. And Brian drove the second part. And he drove the remainder of the trip and drove an average of 55 miles an hour. And it says, for what length of time did Chris drive? Okay, here's the question. So we want to know the length of time Chris drove. So let's put our variable t in place of Chris's time. If they want to know Brian's, then that's where we'd put t. And let's do the same thing with distance as well. So d for distance. Now, we've got these totals. So what we're going to do is we're going to write expressions. 362 is a total. Neither person drove 362 miles. So it's going to be 362 minus d. Put that in some parentheses. Equals 55, but... 7 is a total. Neither person drove 7 hours, so it's going to be 7 minus t. So now we're going to go ahead and use the substitution method and substitute this 45t in for this d right there. So now we've got this. 362 minus 45t equals, and then we multiply this stuff out, we get 55 times by 7 gives me 385 minus 55t. And so now we can go ahead and move some terms around. So we'll go ahead and bring the 55t over to the left-hand side. So we're adding it to both sides. And we'll take this 362 away from the 385. And so when we do so, we end up with a 10t equals 23. So we're ready to do some division here. So I divide by the 10 on both sides, and I end up with t equals 2.3 hours is the time at which Chris ended up driving. So that's why it's important to make sure you put your variables for what they're asking. Well, it looks like a plane flies 600 miles with a tailwind in two hours. So whenever we see tailwind, we think of adding. And so tail wind means that you're going to end up adding the rates together, the weight, rate of the wind and the rate of the plane. So let's write out our distance equals rate times time. 600 miles the plane flew with the tailwind. So we got the two components of this rate. We got the rate of the plane, R, and we've got the rate of the wind, W, we'll call it. And then this gets multiplied. Just fix this W real quick. 
And so this gets multiplied by the number of hours it took, two hours. It takes the same plane three hours, it's a new equation here, three hours, to fly the 600 miles, and this is against the wind. So notice against means that you're going to end up subtracting the wind speed from the rate of the plane. So what we're going to do when we deal with an equation like this, I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to multiply it by a half. And that'll cancel out these twos, but you got to do the same thing on this other side. So this gives me 300 equals R plus W. Do the same thing with this side here. This equation, let's divide it by 3 or multiply by a third. So that'll cancel out the 3's here, leaving us just with this R minus W. And then here, 3 goes into 6 2 times, so you get 200. So we go ahead and add these together, and we end up with 500 equals to R. The W's end up canceling. And so when we go ahead and do the division of 2, we end up with R equals 250. 250 miles per hour. That's how fast the speed of the plane, or how fast the plane was going. Well, looking at our next problem here, car leaves a train station traveling west at a speed of 40 miles an hour. Okay, a train leaves the same station three hours later traveling the same direction at a whole lot faster rate, 120 kilometers an hour. And they ask two things. At what time will the train catch up to the car? And how far from the station is that? So let's go ahead and set up our little equation here. Distance equals rate times time. Whenever they say catches, catches the car, that means we have equal distance. And so that tells us something about the, the distance here. So we've got a car and a train. And we know that their distances are equal because they're going to eventually be at the same place at the same time. The rates are different, 40 miles an hour or 40 kilometers an hour compared to 120. Now their times are different. So they're asking at what time will the train catch the car? Let's put T for train rather than car. If we do that, then the car left three hours ahead of the train. So that means that we have to add three hours to that rate. Now if we had done it the other way called the car T, we'd have to do T minus three for the train. But that's not what we want. We want, the, we want to find the train's time. And so now what we're going to do, take that 120t, put it in for this d up top, and so now we've got 120t equals, and then distribute the 40 over these two numbers here, we've got 40t plus 120, so that's 120, and then we go ahead and move some terms around, so subtract that 40t from both sides, that leaves me with 80t equals 120, so I divide by 80, and it's going to be over an hour, so t is going to end up equaling 120 over 80, which reduces to get a common factor of 4 there, left with 3 over 2. So it looks like an hour and a half, one and one half hour. It's going to end up taking the time, the train, to end up catching the car. Now, how far from the station is that? Well, just take that one and a half, or three halves, and plug it in for t right here, find the distance. d equals 120 times by 3 over 2. See, 2 goes into the 120 60 times. Multiply across, you get 180. 180 kilometers is what our distance is. Well, look at the next couple problems. They are rate problems. And so we're going to set up our little formula this way. We've got the amount of solution and then I multiply by a rate. So times by a rate is a percentage of salt. And then this all equals an amount of salt. Now when I do this, I don't change the percent to a decimal. Because that way I don't have to change, worry about dividing by decimals at all. And so it says how many liters of a 23% solution? How many? Don't know is going to be multiplied, and this is going to be by 23 rather than 0.23. This way I don't have to actually change and deal with any decimals here. As long as I'm consistent, I can do this. So as long as I keep everything is percents rather than decimal form. So 23x is what we get there. Must be added to 88 liters of 69% solution. So 88 liters of a 69% solution. And so we go ahead and multiply this. And we end up with this 
6,072. And so the final, these are the two parts. This is like part one here, part number two here. And this is going to be the mix down below. And so it says to get. So to get means to make a 45% solution. So we're going to add the 88 plus the X together to get a 45% solution. So make sure you distribute. Distribute the 45 over both of those two numbers. And so when you do that, you end up with 45 times by the 88, and that gives us a 3,960, and then plus the 45X. And so I go ahead and add this stuff together. Remember, you're going to add these two parts together, and they equal the total. So you get this 23x plus 6072, and this all equals the 3960 plus 45x. And so we go ahead and move some terms around, opposite operations there, and you'll notice that you end up Maybe subtracting that 23x from both sides, subtract that 3960, and this is what I end up with. I get a 2112 equals 22x. When you do the division, well, x equals 96. 96 liters is what we end up getting there. Well, same sort of problem here, and this time it's an acid solution rather than a salt solution. So it's pretty much set up the same, the amount of solution I'm going to be multiplied by a percent of acid and when we do so we get an amount of acid and so it's very similar just change the numbers around a bit so let's go ahead and re read what it says how many gallons of a 70% solution so x times by 70 so that makes 70 x must be mixed with 70 gallons of 15% so 70 gallons of a 15%. So we multiply those two numbers, we get 1050. And then to make, to obtain. So you see how to obtain tells us we're dealing with the mix now. So our mix is going to be X plus 70. We're going to add those two together, and we get a 60% solution. So we go ahead and multiply. Make sure you distribute. You get a 60X uh, plus 4200. And so we can go ahead and write that out, 70x plus 1050 equals, we get the 60x plus 4200. And so we go ahead and start moving some terms around. And so maybe subtract that 60x from both sides, subtract that 1050 from both sides. And here's what we get, we get 10x equals... And that makes 3,150. So when you do the division, we end up with x equals 315. So 315, and these were gallons of a 70% solution to make that 60% solution. So those are the types of problems that you'll see on this week's test. Good luck.